is the first video in a new series of shorter tutorials that I'm going to call Reaper Cheats. They're about tips and tricks that I recently learned, maybe something as easy as a keyboard shortcut, but that has helped me a lot and that I want to share with you. This first video is going to be about something called stretch markers. Sometimes when you've recorded a track, you realize that it's not tight. The obvious solution, of course, is to re-record, but sometimes you don't have that option. Maybe somebody else sent you the file, or maybe you can't recreate the actual environment that you had when you recorded the track. So the second best option is something called quantizing. Um, quantizing means aligning notes to the grid of your song. So if your grid is in eight notes, all of the notes will automatically snap to the closest eight notes. But quantizing works best with instruments that have isolated notes, such as MIDI files that play synthesizers or drum kits. When it comes to more continuous notes from instruments such as distorted guitars or vocals, quantizing is a lot harder. Enter stretch marks. They're a kind of rubber band function that lets you quantize manually by dragging smaller parts of your recorded track until they fit and align with the grid. Here's an example. Here's a double track guitar, so it's two takes. I've tried to make them as similar as possible, but let's listen to see how I did. Okay, maybe I didn't try my hardest. This is supposed to be a tutorial. But there were obvious problems uh, with the tempo in the song and the alignment of these two tracks. So let's zoom in to see if we can spot the problems. As you can see here, here's one note that's off. There's one note that's off. Here's a note that's really off. This one is also really off. So not only are these tracks not aligned to each other, they're also not aligned to the grid of the song. So let's see how stretch markers can help us. We'll make a copy, uh, not to destroy the originals, and we'll zoom in to see if we can fix this track. So how do you use stretch markers then? Well, you place your cursor where the problem is, you press Shift W on your keyboard, and that introduces a stretch marker. Now holding down Alt, because I don't want this to snap to the grid, there are really small changes that are going to make this good. So holding down Alt, I can use my mouse and I can subtly adjust the problematic part of the track. As you can see, the other parts are kind of coming along with it. Since there's a problem over here too, we can place the marker somewhere in between. And we'll stretch it. And as we can see, we can line up both this part and this part to the grid. So we're focusing on the top track right now. We're going to do the bottom track later. Here's a little bit off. Like that. Seems a little bit off, not much, but let's adjust it just slightly. And if you find that parts of your track are moving that you don't want, you can just introduce another stretch marker. So if we move this part over here, like this, you can see that now this note is slightly out of, out of the grid. So let's put a stretch marker there as well and slightly push it back. And you can keep doing this until the whole track feels like it's aligned to the grid properly. All right, let's listen to it now. Okay, that's quite a difference. So let's play the original one first, and then the stretch marker quantize one after, so you can really tell the difference. Okay. 
now with the tempo fixed. <laughs> So is this cheating? Well, in a way it is, because it's not the recording that you made. On the other hand, I can tell you that 100% of the tracks that get released by labels have been fixed in this way. So it comes down to, do you really want your music to sound the best or not? I use quantizing and stretch markers just to try out ideas in the beginning, because sometimes I write music that's on the edge of my ability and I can't really play it the way it's supposed to be. Um, and sometimes I don't have time to practice it until it's perfect, so I just want to see if it's going to sound good before I actually do the practice. After that, I try my best to practice and record it as, as well as possible. But even a really good take will contain mistakes. And I, for one, am not too proud to correct my mistakes this way. So the question is, are you? That's it for today. Um, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. See you next time.